I am so glad you're here because today we're learning all about synthetic polymers and organic chemistry. These incredible molecules are ubiquitous in daily lives, from a plastic bottle to even the clothes that we wear. So in this video, we're going to look at the structure of synthetic polymers, how to identify the building blocks that make them up, and also how to name them. And stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. Synthetic polymers can be incredibly large molecules made up of individual building blocks known as what are called monomers. These monomers come together and form stable linkages that allow us to produce large molecules that could potentially have various different types of structural properties. For example, several polymers can be used to conduct electricity. Several others make up the clothes that we wear or the plastic that we see in the universe. And once these individual building blocks come together, they are called polymers. We can also see these written out in bracket notation to indicate the different individual monomers that make up those polymers by just writing the number of n. So n indicates the number of individual monomers that come together to make our overall polymer. So oftentimes you'll see polymers depicted using this format or using this type of notation. The nomenclature of synthetic polymers often follows a specific set of rules depending on the structure of the monomers that build up those polymers. For example, on the screen we see that we have a propylene group which is because there are three different carbon atoms on this chain, and there's an alkene. And this functional group is called a styrene. So this is a benzene derivative known as styrene. Therefore, when we go to name the polymer version of these individual polymers, we would call this poly, and then write the rest of the name. So in this case, it would be polypropylene, propylene. And in the case of the styrene derivative, this would be polystyrene. Now for polymers that are made up of systems where there's only a single type of monomer, this is the straightforward way to name these. So you just write the name poly followed by the substituent, that the monomer that was used, so polypropylene and polystyrene. When naming a polymer whose monomer contains two words like vinyl chloride, we change things up a little bit by still writing poly. However, the name of the monomer goes in parentheses at following that. So this would be polyvinyl chloride which is a commonly used polymer for water pipes. So again, two words for the monomer. We place poly followed by the two words in parentheses for polyvinyl chloride. On the screen are several examples of common polymers. Polymers are also often named by their trade names, such as Teflon and superglue. Thus far, we've largely looked at examples of what are called homopolymers, where the polymer is made up of a single type of monomer to generate the entire polymer. In contrast, polymers that are made up of different types of building block chains, known as monomers, are called copolymers. So copolymers are anytime you have two or more monomers that make up the polymeric substance. In this example, you have vinyl chloride and vanillidine chloride that come together to create a polymer called sarin, or S-A-R-A-N. So in this example, we have our vinyl chloride, which only contains a single chlorine atom. It is attached to vanillidine chloride, which has a subtle difference in that the carbon atom on the right-hand side actually contains two chlorine atoms. So for this reason, we have a copolymer built up of vinyl chloride and vanillidine chloride, and they can alternate their structures or their existence in the polymer to create this brand new copolymer. Copolymers are often classified by the order in which they are connected to one another. There are four different types of examples that we'll learn about in this class. Alternating copolymers have what you might expect, which would be just alternating AB monomers that make up the polymer. So in this example, you just have several different repeating chains of those AB, AB orientations. Random, as the name suggests, would just be some sort of random assortment of any one of those monomers. So it could be that it appears that in certain locations there may be some sort of pattern. However, what we often find is that given enough time, you'll notice that it is a relatively random assortment of different monomers that make up these random polymers. Copolymers comprised of homopolymer subunits are called block or graft polymers depending on how they are constructed. For example, if you had a homopolymer that was five subunits of the A chain and it were to combine with another homopolymer 
that was five units of the B homopolymer, they could come together to form what is called a block copolymer. If instead the attachment of the AB homopolymers allowed the polymers to branch, this would what be what is called a graft polymer where these different units can combine at different locations. And in fact, the orientation and the connection points of different polymers often gives rise to the way that we classify them when we're talking about copolymers. One of the things you'll be asked to do is to identify the individual monomers that make up a polymer. For problems like this, it's easiest to try to identify a breakage point at which you know that you can form a chemical bond through one of the different synthetic methods that we've learned about in organic chemistry. For example, we talked about how to form amide bonds in this class. And I see that there is a position at which we can break apart these, this bond to leave behind either an aldehyde or a carboxylic acid that would allow us to form an amide using some sort of amine structure. Therefore, I have successfully identified the two different units that potentially make up this polymer. So if I were to draw those individually, then I see that on the one end, we have our monomer that is a primary amine. And this would be one of the monomers that make up this section of the copolymer. And then in addition to that, I know that if I were to have a carboxylic acid on both ends of this chain, then I would also have the other end of my copolymer. And these come together to form this stable amide bond formation that allows us to generate this overall copolymer. Now let's try some practice problems. Try the problems on the screen independently, then resume the video to check your answers. Nitroethylene is the monomer used in polymerization reactions that generate polynitroethylene. For this example, we use the Fischer orientation to draw the different polymers that are formed via the polymerization of nitroethylene. In order to do so, we just create these different attachments that repeat over and over again to generate the polynitroethylene substance. So here's an example of two of those subunits combined. So we can draw the polymer in this orientation, or we can use the bracket notation to indicate that they are repeating several times over by just writing the different brackets surrounding the individual monomeric unit and writing the letter N to indicate some number of repeating units. Again, this is called poly nitroethylene because nitroethylene is just one word and all you need to do is write the word poly in front of it to get the name of the polymer. In the Codel example of the synthetic copolymer, I can identify that I see several different functional groups which might provide a good breakage point for us. For example, I see that there is an ester that has been formed. And in this class, we've learned about ester formation, which is when you have a reaction of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So I know that that is likely to be the breakage point with which we will take our two monomer building blocks, which contain an alcohol and a carboxylic acid, to form this ester. So from there, I can see that it's likely that my alcohol substrate comes from this side. So therefore, this would be the building block that would allow me to generate this molecule. And notice that it is a symmetrical species where you have the two alcohols on either side. And I also see that there is going to be a location at which I can have two carboxylic acids coming off the benzene ring. So for this reason, I know that it is also symmetrical with the different carboxylic acids coming off either side. And if I were to react this alcohol with this carboxylic acid, then I see that there are several locations at which this polymerization reaction can occur. Again, just using the same chemistry that we've learned about in organic chemistry. In the next video, we're going to learn all about polymerization reactions. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel to learn how we convert monomers into polymers. Comment down below if you have any questions about this material or anything else related to chemistry, and I'd be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.